Fire destroys barn in the town of Mosul. Four wounded in Milwaukee shooting. Walker requests FEMA flood aid. These stories and more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review. Service WSCS TV. News content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie, and this is Community News Review for Monday, September 17th, 2018. Fire destroyed a barn in the town of Mosul Friday afternoon. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department says they received reports of a barn fire on County Road MM. More than a dozen departments responded to the scene, but were unable to save the barn. It was used to store hay and a few chickens, and it is not known if any animals were hurt in the fire. One person is dead after a shooting early Sunday morning in Manitowoc. Police say that they were responding to a fire alarm on South 35th Street early in the morning when a man with a blunt instrument confronted an officer. That officer fired his weapon at the man, and the man was pronounced dead at the scene. Officials say this is not related to the double homicide from a week ago. The offer is on administrative leave. A Sheboygan man has been arrested and facing charges after a high-speed chase in Manitowoc County Wednesday afternoon. The Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department says they were notified that a state trooper was trying to pull over a Kia Soul that was northbound on I-43 in Sheboygan County. The trooper called off the chase, but a short time later, a Manitowoc County Sheriff's deputy saw the vehicle on I-43 near Silver Creek Road in the town of Newton, going over 100 miles per hour. When the deputy tried pulling the vehicle over, the driver continued on northbound I-43, exiting the Calumet Avenue in Manitowoc. While he was trying to turn east, the vehicle hit a curb, rolled onto its side, knocking down a traffic signal light before stopping. The driver, 21-year-old Guiana Smith of Sheboygan, was pulled out of the vehicle through the windshield and medically treated before before being booked in the Manitowoc County Jail. He is facing felony charges of fleeing an officer, OWI, and a number of traffic-related charges. A 30-year-old man is in critical condition after a farming accident yesterday afternoon in the town of Herman. The Sheriff's Department received a 911 call about a man who caught his clothing in a power takeoff device, which spins at a high rate of speed behind a tractor to drive other pieces of the farm equipment. A number of area departments responded and Flight for Life transported the man to Theta Care and Nina to be treated. A neighborhood dispute led to a Saturday shooting in Milwaukee. Four people were wounded near 21st and National Streets. Milwaukee police say three of the four victims were taken to Freighter Hospital and the other did not require treatment. Police say Saturday's shooting may be tied to a disagreement on that block from last month and the incident remains under investigation. Police and the UW School of Medicine and Public Health will partner to study teens' use of digital technologies and their mental and social health. Dr. Megan Marino is professor and head of the social media and adolescent health research team that will lead the project and the initial partnership that they will be pursuing for the next year. And depending on how the collaboration goes and how their process goes, there is a potential that they may continue to collaborate for another few years. Objectives will include understanding the relationship between digital technology use and health and well-being of youth and their, the role of parents in the kids' use of digital technology. 
Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker has asked the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, to conduct a Preliminary Damage Assessment, or PDA, beginning on September 24th for flood and tornado damage to homes, businesses, and public infrastructure. He said many Wisconsin families were hurt following the de devastating flooding and tornado outbreak that impacted our state in the last three weeks. Walker said in a statement, we want to get federal disaster relief as quickly as possible to help these families and communities recover. The request is the first step in seeking a federal disaster declaration and teams from FEMA and the U.S. Small Business Administration will coordinate with state and local officials beginning the week of September 24th, assesses damages to homes, businesses, and infrastructure like roads and bridges. That will take approximately a week to complete. Once the assessment is complete, information will be given to the governor for use in his request to the Trump administration for a federal disaster declaration. And finally, a statement between Wisconsin and this ACLU over the treatment of youth inmates at Lincoln Hills and Copper Lake schools is now in effect. ACLU of Wisconsin senior attorney Karen Rotker says these changes are significant and are for the betterment of the youth offenders being held at the two facilities. This is something that after a lot of mediation and negotiation that both sides reached an agreement on and we think that it will improve significantly in the conditions at Lincoln Hills and Copper Lake schools. One of the most important parts of that settlement is ending punitive solitary confinement. Ultimately, it will be eliminated within 10 months of when the court actually signs the order, said Rochter. The settlement also limits the use of restraints and requires probable cause to conduct ser strip searches on the children in the facilities and will phase out the use of pepper spray. Under the guidelines, the Department of Corrections will also have an outside monitoring at both schools. There's going to be an outside monitor who will be able to come in, observe what's going on, perhaps give suggestions, but help ensure the agreement is being complied with. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next time for another recap of our local news. From all of us at Community News Review, have a great day. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.